comment live. If you can see me, say you can see me. I love day, day four. All of them work really well together. So we're going to do a recap and let me move this so you can see all the text and everything. Okay. So recap, Monday we talked about gamification. We talked about the basics of inspiring people, motivating them, keeping them engaged, and helping them get quick wins. That's a big part of gamification. I've got a piece of hair right in my face. Okay. Day two, we talked about the points, the badges, and the leaderboard method and formula, and how that enables us to reward people for taking the actions that make our business grow and give them results. Yesterday, we talked about the identity ideology. What shifts are you giving your people in your space reasons to work with you, having them step out of their comfort zone, excuse me, and ultimately doing things they wouldn't do by themselves. That's why we buy products. That's why we hire coaches. That's why we follow other people in communities because we weren't meant to do it alone and we don't have to do it alone. So gamification works with the human psychology of creating those identity shifts. Okay. So today we're talking about the leveling up system and what it means for you to be able to scale in your business. I am just going to share this video so other people see it. And get it in the right space. So being able to share with people exactly what they expect of you, exactly what you expect of them inside of your business allows you to scale. Okay, so tomorrow we'll talk about gamification foundations. Um, but today we're talking about why gamified leveling up your business is the smartest way to scale. And it was very deliberate not to talk about growing your business, okay? And we're going to dig into that. For those of you that are just here on your first day, we've had a couple people join the Facebook group this morning. Um, here is a little bit about me. I am competitive. My name is Jenny Hanson Lane, and I have a gamification agency with an emphasis on ideation. So I love ideas. I'm powered by ideas, and I never run out of ideas. And they're good ideas, you guys. I um, wasn't always sure about this superpower until I did a lot of personality assessments, and I always gave people ideas for free. <laughs> so it was validated in many ways. And most importantly, I am motivated by fun. I hired a gamification coach earlier this year, and when I got on my call with them, I realized I was more obsessed with gamification than they were. And I was already implementing the things that they taught me. I wasn't learning anything new. So I dove in and just got my level one certification for gamification. Who would have thought that that's a thing, right? So as I mentioned before, we're gonna talk about the importance of scaling. And I want you to understand that there's a huge difference between growing your business and scaling your business. And you need to have this paradigm shift to save you so much stress and heartache and waste of time, literally. I'm glad I found it when I did, but if I could have gotten it a couple years before, it would have even been better. So let's look at the difference real quick between growing and scaling. Growth means that you're adding resources at the same rate that you're adding revenue. And there's nothing wrong with that, right? We all want to grow in revenue. But growth is also when you gain a customer or a client, you have to hire more people to service them. So I have a, a friend that runs a really big agency. And for a long time, she thought having a huge agency was really powerful. And it wasn't until she hired coaches that they were like, let's look at scaling. And that's what we're going to talk about the difference, right? What is the, what's such the big deal? So 
growth, it, you know, adds revenue to the same rate and is adding more cost, right? Because you're bringing people on to serve your people and there's got to be a better way. No, it's not just about growth, okay? So we don't want to grow our businesses. Uh, we want to scale. And there is growth in some aspects, but if we could focus on the elements of scaling through gamification, we would be all the more wise, okay? So scale is about adding revenue at a rapid rate while adding resources at an incremental rate. So they do balance each other quickly add customers while adding fewer additional resources. So being able to set up your business in a way that you have the services and products and offerings that don't require other people, that you're able to manage that. And while there's nothing wrong with growing a business and getting it to the place that you want it to be at, but understanding that there is a lot of opportunity to scale and everybody would chase that and should chase that, okay? So scaling begins with sound offers, products and services that move people from the cheapest product you offer to the most expensive. So understanding that if you have one product that works really well, you can still scale. You can be able to increase the revenue of that product, but also find ways to enhance it and support it. And you've all heard of the examples of growing versus scaling, right? And upselling versus um, cross-selling. And so really fun examples of upselling is McDonald's. When you go through the drive-thru and you order a drink and they ask you, would you like to supersize that? That is an upsell. And you give them your order and then they say, would you like fries with that? That's a cross sell. So understanding those things, where are the bigger cups and where are the French fries? is the way to scale. I just told you all my secrets. Thank you, McDonald's. People put the cart before the horse all the time. Without foundational data or gamification, you can't focus on hyperscaling because you don't know what to scale. It is an intuition or maybe you have the data of buyers only. You know, you, you ran ads and you got a lot of sales. So you know that that is a validated product. But what are other data marks can you put in to focus on hyperscaling that product and that audience? Because not every audience you might have in your business fits for every product. And that's a different story we can talk about too. So not understanding analytics of scaling with just will just keep you busy and burnt out and nobody wants that and you know what no one deserves that no one deserves that okay so we're gonna talk about three reasons why upselling your customers should be a gamified journey and as we go through these things i want you to take notes i want you to make comments about the things that are coming to your mind the ahas and what this means to you inside your business i'm going to pop into the facebook group and see if there's any questions And I'm super excited to dive into these reasons. These reasons will give you clarity and empowerment. So keeps your business, sorry, keeps your business customer centric, customer centric. What does that mean? Your most valuable potential market when scaling your business is your current customers. You may hear when people are overwhelmed or they're not sure, they think, well, I need more customers to do this. And if you have any type of list at all, an email list, a Facebook group, a following on social media, or even a Facebook friends list, depending on who your customer is, that is a valuable asset. And understanding what you have in front of you is I like to relate it to plumbing, that when you want to make money, 
you turn on the water and you have water, right? So if you have built something that generates customers and you think you need more customers, that is really similar to going and building another house to get water out of a different spigot. It's a lot more work, even just thinking of it, even if that analogy doesn't work out 100% as you think about, you know, the caveats of it, you've already built something. And so understanding that you use those foundations when you're going to scale, you start with your current customers. Because there's a reason why they follow you. There's a reason why they're on your list or in your space. They have, they value you in some way. Neglecting your current customers is detrimental, right? So scaling is about increasing the value of your customers uh, through the things that you give them. So upselling has less to do with pushing more goods and services on a customer and more on a focusing to meet your customer's actual needs. So the results of being customer centric, you will know your customer centric business if you are increasing profits, increasing customer loyalty, increasing in return on investment, increasing customer lifetime value, balancing balances growth between new and existing customers, offers convenience and flexibility for customers. My favorite was balancing growth between new and existing customers because we always want new people, right? We should have lead generation but what are we doing with existing customers? How do we serve them? And what do we do for them that keeps them in our space? And there's nothing wrong with anyone unsubscribing. If they don't feel aligned to your message, that's okay. You say, I'm sorry, this isn't for you and you move on. Number two, allows you to track and set measurable, measurable goals. This is really big. And one of the reasons I really love gamification. You need a way to recognize areas where the current game plan is falling short. So this is um, some stats you can get. For example, I run traffic to a sales funnel. I have a lot of sales funnel, but this one that I'm thinking of, the main product is $27. And then the bump is, is just an add-on, just an add-on. And it doesn't convert as well and it hurts my entire funnel. So the next funnel that I built, I made sure that it would not fall short when it came to that. And sure enough, it had a better conversion than my first funnel. So because I had analytics inside of my sales funnel, it allowed me to recognize areas where the current game plan is falling short. Now, when I asked you all to get a member vault account, it was because member vault will show you where you're falling short. And that is a great place to begin gamification and implementing gamification. Okay. So it helps you identify places where you can beef up resources for better results. This is, this is where careful tracking becomes essential. And that's part of gamification is setting up the tracking in a way that people understand what they can get out of it and gives them expectations of what is expected of, of them to move up and finish programs and get results, right? Finish courses and offers and get results. So it helps you identify places where you can, oh, we just did that one twice. So being able to beef up resources is a form of upselling your customer, okay? So number three, it increases customer loyalty and retention. So gamified upselling is to give the customers all of the options so they can make a knowledgeable choice. And when you do that, they see that you are trustworthy, but that you have the experience to help them over the problems that they are facing. It shows customers that you care and expect and ex respect their needs and that you are going to help them along the way. Upselling and cross-selling is closely related to customer satisfaction. This was um, a study that was given. I need to pull it up, but it I loved reading it because it showed me that we, sometimes you think, oh, they're being salesy, but we 
how many times do we say like, yes, upgrade my drink or, you know what? Yeah, I would like fries. Or how many times do we say, oh, they didn't even ask me if I wanted this. So understanding that upselling and cross selling can be done in a way that you're doing it for the intention of customer satisfaction and that's it. And when you can remove yourself from the cell, um, it's a really sweet spot because you know that you're helping people resolve their problems, right? Maybe that person's super, super thirsty and you upgraded their drink to a large. When customers are engaged in your offers, they don't leave. That's a huge part of gamification upselling is that they want to finish your course and they want to implement it and they want to see what's behind the curtain. They want to see what else you have to offer. And so they're less likely to forget about who you are and go somewhere else, right? Think about how many things that you've bought and you're like, oh, I never finished that, but it was a really good deal. And the sales got me in the, you know, the sales technique and the ad copy got me in the door. So favorite gamified upsell examples is the one I shared you about the drink. Just, you know, a little something more. Another one is Google introduced over 500 badges that can be earned for frequent readers on Google News. You may have never even heard of this. And Google is really good at gamification. They've gamified their logo. So every time someone goes to google.com, they press on their logo and they pull up the information about it. And when Pac-Man had their 30th year anniversary, Google recorded 5.4 million hours users spent playing Pac-Man through Google's search bar. So it like blows my mind when I think about this. So Google is also really good at abandoning things that don't work. So they gamify something and try it. And if they're not getting the results that they want, they simply just move on and discard it. And I think that's pretty incredible. So being able to gamify people to stay in your space is a really powerful technique. So results that you can expect by gamifying your upsells is rapid feedback. So you will know by the validation of the cell, right? And by rewarding people, you'll get those feedbacks. People will have a clear objective of what you offer in your business and what it looks like and what they can do to achieve those things. It creates a compelling narrative. This is what we talked about with the identity ideology. They're like, oh, I wanna be a bosses and breadwinner. That's one of my friend's masterminds and I have the shirt and I wear it all the time and I get compliments all the time. I love saying I'm a boss and a breadwinner. So having that narrative, right? Like I wanna be an authentic boss entrepreneur. Like what are these things that I need to do to, and so it creates this narrative inside their mind. And the most important thing is that it's challenging but achievable tasks that you put inside. So people believe it's worth the money because they put in the work and they got the results. They just need someone to teach them how to do it. So those are by far my most favorite thing. So think about what will you create for your community to, cre to create that transformation? What is that form of gamification in your business? And it's really important just to remember the basics of this is a customer revenue life cycle, right? So you acquire a customer. Maybe it was a freebie. Maybe it was $7, $17, $77, $47. You acquired the customer. And after you've acquired the customer, you would essentially onboard them. Now, what would this light bulb and star and little thought bubbles be? What form of gamification are you giving them even just through the onboarding process so they don't leave, they have customer satisfaction and they wanna come back for more, okay? So onboarding is post sell. And as we do that, we offer them more. We get to know them, information leads to inspiration where we can serve them, get them, help them get results and move them up our value ladder. Um, it is through that retention of the things that we've created where we're talking about the narratives and the ideation, um, sorry, the identity ideology that helps them just stay magnetized to what you are offering. And it's the cycle that you can repeat over and over again because you have the basic foundational steps of gamification and how you want to help people 
get results. And this is really great in terms of a corporate environment where you're onboarding your employees and laying the foundation for them to move up and get, um, I wanted to say diploma, advancements or raises or promotions in your business and that they actually wanna stay at your business. So understanding that brand identity and culture is a great way to promote and retain your people inside of your business. So um, let me know if there's any questions and uh, I'll check the chat real quick. If you're watching this the day after, you can go to our questions portal and see what questions you might have in on based off of this particular training. Okay, so Friday we will talk deeply about gamification foundations, why you need gamifications and gamification and what you can do to start implementing game gamification. So we'll we'll be back here same time, same place. So let me know, post in the group your takeaways. It's been really fun to see the things that you guys have been thinking about and the changes that you've decided to make in your business based off of the information about the power of gamification. So I hope you guys are well. Love you lots. Peace out.